This is the uh, fuselage of the America, our reproduction, and we've done this uh, with the with the same materials that Curtis used in 1914, with the exception of the glue and the fabric. As we uh, you saw on the wings, the fabric is modern fabric, and we're using modern fabric on the fuselage too. Originally, this fabric, the uh, Stitz Polyfiber from Consolidated Coatings, our good friends, uh, was silk. And we thought that would be a little bit expensive if we tried to do it with silk. And this, of course, is much, much stronger, and it's, uh, it gives you a good feeling in a wooden airplane. It's virtually fireproof, too, so that's another great feature. The construction uh, is the materials are this planking is Sitka spruce, nominally a quarter inch thick, and the uh, frame of the airplane, all these internal frames are ash. And the internal frame is fastened to its, its members with uh, copper rivets, as Curtis did in, in the original. It's a, it's a copper slating nail that you put a little washer burr on the inside and then buck it up and, and peen it. And it's a real strong joint. Of course, that's all glued together, too. The, uh, the fasteners that hold the planking on are, are slotted head brass screws. The Phillips wasn't invented in 1914. So we're authentic in that, even though it's a little bit tougher to put a slotted head screw in than a Phillips. Uh, the, these, these lifting surfaces here were added on later on the original boat when they, when they uh, had difficulty getting the fuel load off the water. Uh, the airplane weighs 3,000 pounds without fuel, and originally they were able to lift off 2,000 pounds, which was enough to get the the two OXX6 engines uh, fueling for the run from Newfoundland to the Azores, which was the, the route across the North Atlantic. So these sponsors were added, and we've got the information on, on the shape and style of those from Library of Congress had all the records on the 10 different iterations they went through to, to develop these sponsors, and this was what they finally came up with in the, as the end result. So it gives you more hydrodynamic lifting surface, and also it gives you a little bit of aerodynamic help also. Uh, the planking, I, I mentioned it's quarter inch planking. Actually, it's two layers of quarter inch on the bottom. And uh, the bottom is, is in a herringbone. The inner layer is in a herringbone pattern, which you can see in the sponsors, because that comes out from the, as, as uh, one piece with the hull. And then the fabric goes in between the layers, and then there's a, a layer of long ways, quarter inch planking, running over the hull uh, from the nose to the step. And beyond the step, it's, it's quarter inch again. Step, of course, was the Curtis feature that kind of made them all work as far as getting these water planes off the water. And uh, every, every uh, flying boat uh, water plane since then always has the step as a feature. It breaks the suction. It has the step vents that let air in and back of the step to, uh, to uh, bring it up to atmospheric pressure. And what's make, it's what makes the, the flying boat lift off the water. Uh, the wings, th these stub wings out here are the part on, in the hull that's the lower wing. The upper wing sits above this one. And as I stand here, the upper wing is 13 feet off the floor, and the engines go between the upper and the lower wings, and the propellers are pushers. So their propellers are sitting back in this area here. Uh, we're also we're working right now on getting all the internal bracing uh, secured in there, all bolted and glued and safety and cottered. And, uh, then we'll finish up the rest of the two pieces of plank on each side. And then the, the hull, other than put, putting the controls in, pilot seat and all that stuff is pretty well complete. Uh, tail feathers are, are kind of in process. We got the vertical stabilizer there uh, on the airplane and uh, the rudders back on the far bench. We've got the elevators spread around the shop here somewhere. But everything is, all the major components now are, are in process. Uh, most, we, we've been blessed with a few items to tell us what to do, but not with complete details. And uh, we have a real good 3D, uh, th uh, three view drawing of the whole airplane. By, uh, it was done by B.D. Thomas, which, who was Curtis's original designer, 
on this project. He also designed the, the Curtis Jenny. And uh, we have his, his work. We have a lot of written information. We have drawings of the ailerons, of, uh, two of the wing sections, two out of the seven wing sections. And we have some internal parts, uh, metal parts, that give us a lot of clues what dimensionally everything else was. And, and quite a few photographs of the airplane uh, on, under construction originally back in 14. So we have had to guess at places. We think we've guessed uh, close enough, and we expect the, the weight of this one to be in, in the same neighborhood as the original, which would be 3,000 pounds without fuel. We're not going to give these guys too much fuel because we don't want them to fly it from Newfoundland to the Azores. So we'll go with a light fuel load, and uh, if it flies well, we'll take it on a tour. We had the fuselage upside down until a week and a half ago, and we've just turned it to do this bottom planking. And uh, it's kind of a sweet looking shape, we think. It looks like it ought to, ought to go through the water lickety tear. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's kind of a, a V bottom, almost like a speedboat. And then there's a little bit different flat area out here where the, where the sponsons are attached. It has a substantial rub, rub uh, rail there for pulling it up on the beach up here. And uh, from a distance, it doesn't look like there's any blemishes in it. How long did it take you to plank the bottom, Art? That was about a three-week operation. Uh -huh. uh, we actually did the inner layer, which is the, the uh, diagonal herringbone layer. We did that in two thicknesses of an eighth inch thick glued together because we just couldn't make it, make it do these crazy bends Oh, yeah. all in one shot without having it highly stressed. So we got it pretty well, the wood's pretty well relaxed on there. And actually each layer is screwed on independently. The inner two layers that make up the herringbone pattern are, uh, are screwed to the frames, which run crossways, of course. And then the fabric was put on and, and uh, doped on with, a, with the polytac, or not don't, I shouldn't use the word dope because that isn't in the process. But anyway, it's polytacked onto the bottom, and then the then the second layer is put on uh, with brass screws again, and those screw screws filled, and all the all the gaps between the between the seams are all filled, and it's all sanded. It's really ready for its final coat of paint. The fabric will continue on over the whole airplane as they did originally. So we'll make a we'll make a uh, a nice looking seam along here, which hopefully won't even show. And, uh, and then it, that'll, that fabric will get the same treatment as the wing fabric. The wings are the same fabric. And then it gets the bright red paint over that. What kind of wood was used in the bottom? The bottom is Sitka spruce. Uh, the center rail is ash. And all the framing in the, framing in the airplane is ash. The steering yoke is pretty well complete, but we haven't installed it. I, go ahead, steering. And, uh, you got the pilot's seat in there. You might want to peek down in there and see that. There's a backrest for them. We've got, them. We've got these seats kind of fit to the size of our guys that, that are going to fly it this, uh, this coming September. Uh, Curtis and his people weren't, weren't quite as hefty as our guys today. So we did have to make some adjustments as to where we put the, the seat and the seat back and the, and the control wheels. But it's basically the same control setup they had originally. Uh, you might want to take a closer peek at this. this. You can see how the inner layer of planking goes because that's what shows in the sponsor area here. And then back here, these are the, uh, the shape of these frame members, the back of a step. Are elliptical, and uh, we, we didn't have anything to tell us that. But they, uh, we knew the confines, the four, the four lines, the straight lines that make up pretty much all the back of the sides. So you got two straight lines on the side, two straight lines in the top, or until it starts going uphill, and then the bottom is the bottom center is a straight line from the from the step to the tail. And the only thing that will fit in that in those confines is an ellipse. So each one of these is a, is a different size elliptical number when we started out, when we first put the 